Hey, what's up, guys? It's T-Bone here, and welcome back to the fourth episode of the Beginner's Guide to Playing Legendary Game of Heroes. I wanted to start by saying thank you all for your positive feedback uh, for this series. I've gotten some really good questions and also some really good feedback on the type of things that could make this uh, series more helpful and more useful. So I'm looking forward to providing more content that is going to make it uh, helpful for you. So in the last episode, we walked through uh, going through a guild, you know, joining a guild, and then um, the various ways you can level up a hero through uh, powering up, through evolving, and also awakening. We talked about the strategies around it, and also we looked at uh, briefly a um, participating in the weekly event. Today, I would like to focus on sort of uh, what it means for you to quickly, you know, what will it take for you to quickly uh, level up your player. And then uh, we will also take a look at some of the other ways to build up your team as you go along. So first, let's go back into the main campaign and let's explain how this works. So um, all of these levels, uh, you can see right now, Adventure 1 of 7, this has actually six levels and it's divided into two subsections. We went through the first subsection already and it will give you um, 100 gems by completing each subsection. So by us completing the second subsection, we will uh, expect to receive another 100 gems. And by doing uh, by getting three stars for all of the levels for per adventure, you also get 300 gems. You also get 50 uh, gems every time you level up. So that's why you want to quickly uh, go through and gain more experience, level up, get more gems, and go through the main campaign to continue to build this up. Every sub, every level will give you different amounts of uh, experience. So the very first one, you'll get 100, per, 100 experience. And then starting at level 1-6, you'll get uh, 200 experience. Actually, starting level 1-4. So starting these levels, you're going to get 200 experience for each one. And then you'll, you'll just keep going up uh, along the way. So let's go ahead and bring in our... Um, let's go and grab a couple of... I guess I'm going to borrow Lyra, which is a um, a current feature hero. Let's go through our our low again. So we have 10 stamina that we're going to spend, and we're going to expect to get 200 experience points by going through these levels. So let's go through and see how how much we can get here in in this episode here. Okay, so again, I'm using an all Earth team. We can also uh, build different teams, but right now I have actually um, sacrificed all my other heroes to level up my, my cards. So this is the team I'm working with right now. And so let's let's do... So again, same thing. The, the idea here is you want to try and build as many uh, power gems as possible and look for ways to match them together. And uh, the better if you can actually match the same color power gems, you'll get even more um, you'll get more damage output that way. So some of the different I'm going to show you some of the different ways you can create uh, power gems. It's all about getting uh, as many crosses as you can or basically any combination with five or more gems. And this is one of those things where as you play more, you're going to uh, get better at it. So let's do this. Okay, and then uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to do this and then bring this green gem down. And you'll notice that all of, almost all of my cards now have their, um, their battle skills ready, so we can start using them and see what it's like. So you've already seen uh, some of the other heroes that we've, uh, we've used, and we can see what uh, Lyra does. So let's press and hold. So this one actually will generate spear intensity. We will talk about that later. And it also converts a water gem to an earth gem every turn for three turns. So this one's a little bit more powerful than some of the other uh, cards here. So that's why joining a guild, being able to use your friend's cards is uh, is helpful because you get to use different cards that you don't actually already have. There's no limits as to what level cards you can use. So that's the one nice thing. It doesn't matter what your level is. You can use someone else's card at any level. All right. And so we're going to do... Let's see. You can actually use your... Um, can use a power here and it looks like this particular unit will convert uh, earth gems into heart gems so that's something that uh, I didn't pay attention to so you can see my green one of my green gems actually got converted 
We can still use it. We can still uh, match the two different gems to get damage. It's just not going to be as high as uh, if they were both earth gems, but that's okay. I think uh, I'm actually going to be able to deal enough damage to clear this level anyway. Okay, so that was uh, wave three of three. So this is level, so you can see this is level, uh, I believe one five. And then we got three stars here. We completed mission in four turns. And you can see that we received another 200 experience points and we went up to level five. It increased the max number of friends that we could have, it increased our maximum stamina and increased the number of cards that we could actually have. And we got 50 gems on top of that. So leveling up, Getting play, uh, player rank up is, you know, is a good thing to have. And also there are milestones. So if you start uh, leveling up, I believe, at level 50, level 100, and so forth, you get additional gem bonuses as well. Okay, so we we already got killed. Uh, we've joined a guild. Uh, let's go ahead and finish this one up, get the three stars, and then we will be able to um, see what happens there. So let's go ahead and now see if we have any... So we also have a six card... So you can also borrow a card that isn't your affinity. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow a uh, light hero here, Brutus Mark. And uh, why not? You know, good ex good opportunity to ex explore other cards that other people have. And it's also a good way to bring in more powerful cards to help you through these events. So, you know, feel free to bring in as, as many powerful cards as you could. Uh, and this one is a light, so you'll you'll want to uh, match light gems in order to uh, to invoke its damage. And this will actually uh, create more light gems as you use the power skill, uh, use the power uh, battle skills there. So let's go ahead and do this. And okay, and then we can prepare. As as I'm going through this, the way I'm playing here is I'm always looking for the next step. I try to leave my gems in a position where I could uh, match them in the next turn. Uh, but sometimes, and then I try to save my power gem if po at all possible. Sometimes it's not. So then what I do is I just go ahead and use it. And it's okay. It's okay sometimes too if you wanted to simply um, take a turn and get and get damage if that means you can use that turn to move the gem where you want to. So I'll show you an example of what I mean by that. What I want to do is I'm going to try and um, move my blue gem and the red gem next to each other even though I'm not really going to be able to uh, deal any damage using them. Uh, let's say I want, to, I want to be able to move them. So what I could do here is I could um, use the fact that when I match gems I can have a next turn I can use this as a way to to make my gems travel so what you what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my heart gems on the left left bottom corner and then I'm going to match the the light gem so that I can move my red gem next to the the blue power gem you'll see what I mean by that so let's go ahead and move the heart then the light so you can see that uh, because with those two turns now I can make my uh, power gem traverse to uh, to, to, to where I need it to go. And then um, I can actually go ahead and match these two. Now, why would I why would I ever wanna match um, power gems that don't actually give you any attack? Well, the reason is when you match two power gems of different colors or of any color really, it also clears the board of all of those uh, gems of that color. So in, in this particular case, it would have uh, cleared the board of all the blue and all the red gems and when it does that, it gives you a higher uh, higher chance of the gems that you do care about dropping on the board so that you can increase your chance of uh, dealing damage there. So that that's the, the reason why you would want to do that. Even if you can't uh, deal damage, it's something that you could do as a way to um, prepare for the next battle. So let's do this. And then another thing I did, you see what I did in my last turn there is, um, even though I couldn't match the green gems, just allow it to cascade. So the gems will always drop down. So what you can do is, uh, something you can do is, um, if you see gems that are are next to each other and separated by a gem that you can actually uh, clear out, just do that and then allow the cascade to drop down to, uh, to do two things. One, to give you more damage and two, to build up on your bonus, uh, bonus uh, combo combination. Uh, the more combos you get, the higher the damage. So that's another way to uh, increase your damage overall. So you can see I, I went through these levels relatively easily, and we got a bunch of treasures here as well. So we got uh, so by clearing, we got 100 gems for clearing the 
uh, for clearing the the level. And I think did I level up here? Perhaps I actually um, got more gems here. So in this case, I got a hundred and. 50 gems, and then I got two cards here. I also got a Star Haven Opal, Idol Shard, and Men Menril Fruit, as well as some gold. So let's go ahead and uh, thank the Guildmate. The Guildmate will get 30 honor points. Remember, that's an in-game currency uh, for you to um, for you to, to to purchase other things. So you can see I did not actually level up. So by finishing that last uh, subsection, I got 150 gems. So just just like that, just by playing through, uh, I've gained now. Up to 600 gems, and I'm st I still have 140. If you look at the uh, the, <clears throat> the stamina amount on the top right, when you first start a game, you're gonna have a lot of stamina over more uh, over your maximum allowed at 35 or 30. Actually, uh, the the guy the goal is here uh, is to give you as much stamina as possible in the beginning, so you can go through all these levels. Like you should be able to go through at least two or three adventures using the stamina that's that's provided for you, so that you can actually uh, level up to about level rank 10 relatively easily. Once your stamina depletes, anytime you level up you will refill all of your stamina. So the idea here is go through your uh, go through your stamina as much as possible. As soon as your your stamina as soon as you have enough stamina, go ahead and fight in the um in in the um the main campaign so that you can continuously use up the stamina to get more experience, build up your level, and then the you want to try and use up, you know, basically use up all of your stamina close to when you're leveling up so that when you do uh, level up you're gonna be replenishing more so that you you don't waste some of the stamina so in the beginning uh, stamina management is going to be is going to be helpful it's not going to be the most important thing but if you can make it so that uh, you use up the last bit of your stamina to fight that last fight that will give you your level then that would be very useful for you so if you take a look here you can also see click on the rank 5 it will tell you how much experience you have right now so I can see I am I am at 200 out of 500 experience points right now so another 300 points and I will go up to level 6 okay and so at um, and right now we're on Adventure 2, so the first level of, of uh, level 2 is going to give me 200 experience points. Uh, and then the next one is going to give me 300. So by finishing the next two levels, I will go up another rank and I will get more, more gems and I will be closer to, to my target goal of going to at least rank 10 and, and so forth. Okay, so that is ba the basics of, you know... Um, what you should expect as you're going through the levels. The next episode we're gonna, in the next episode, I'm just gonna jump ahead and go to uh, rank 10 because I wanna show you some of the other things that are available. As you can see, as of right now in rank five, we still don't have access to Bounty Hunt, uh, Bounty Hunt and the Recruiting Heroes. These are going to be additional ways for you to get more things. And you can see here, I'm, I also have some rewards for my scavenge and craft potions. So let's see what we get here. So let's collect the rewards here. So uh, in this case, I got a card as a reward. Uh, by sending somebody out to do something for me. It can come back with different uh, rewards as well. In this case, I got a card, so that's good. And then Craft Potions gave me more stamina. Okay, so if you wanted more stamina, make sure that you always have somebody. Uh, you can send somebody out to, uh, to to do this. So Dispatch Ally to collect potions. You're always going to get some potions. This is the best way to get more stamina. Okay, so Craft Potions more than more likely than not is going to give you stamina which is going to be really useful especially in the beginning of the uh, of your game and then scavenge is good because you will get um a combination of either stamina or cards or uh, some other things that you can use to level your cards so these two are going to be really helpful and you want to make sure that you're always going through and you can see here scavenge only takes five minutes okay so after five minutes you can collect your uh, reward and then send somebody out again so this is a really good way to just keep building up so in the beginning make sure you're using this as much as possible and it's it, it's you know it only costs a little bit of gold and gold is easy for you to get as long as you play through the campaign now let's go and uh, before we sign off, let's take a look at this before uh, the event is over. So first let's collect the reward for the keys that we get. Remember that keys are what allows you to go into the crusade and go through the map. We went through one level before, but we're not going to go through all of these. What I wanted to show you is, well, if you're going to participate, what, what is going to be the reward for you? Uh, so what you can do is go back into your homepage. 
go to the boss arena and then you can see here there is a uh, top player section okay so near the very top there's a bunch of items here so you go to the top players just to see where you rank just by participating getting any sort of trophies you will be uh, placed in sort of a uh, a league and then right now you can see I am position 90 out of 100 squires league is what I'm in this is the lowest league for participating but regardless of your placement as long as you participate click on the rewards here so if you click on the chest you will get something okay so simply by participating I am guaranteed to get at least 100 gems 30,000 gold and 10 potions at the end of this event so this is a very easy way, even if I don't do well in the beginning, because I don't expect to, I will get some rewards, especially in gems, which is very helpful to go through the, the um to go through the the event itself. Now you can see that there are different leagues. So we can see there's Legends, which is at the top, King's League, Knights League, and the Squires League. And then for play and then it also tells you what are the rewards for being uh, number one in each league. So in the Squires League Eventually, if you get powerful enough, you can start winning uh, heroes as well as more gems, more gold, and more potion. And then if you move up to the next league, the rewards are going to get better and better and better. Okay, So there is incentive to participate. And in the beginning, even if you don't do well, make sure you participate a little bit just so that you can get the experience and also get the rewards at the end. All right. And so this combination of everything, so going through the, um, the main campaign as often as possible, using the uh, scavenge and craft potions, as well as just, you know, participating in the weekly events, even if you don't have uh, great cards, is going to be uh, very helpful. And as you're going through, uh, we can go and take a look at the inbox here. So as you go through, uh, you will see that uh, in my inbox, you're getting, you get more uh, stuff here. So as people use your, and you can see we got a mastery reward here by going through um, all of the levels in Adventure 1. We got 300 gems just by doing that. Okay, so now I'm up to 900 gems and I got a bunch of um, honor points for people sending me out on on events and now I've collected enough for 900 this is where now you can sort of say well these are the free gems where should I spend it you could choose to spend it on any of the packs that come out but what I would recommend is only spend gems on ones that give you a guaranteed card by tier 2 so let's take a look and see what what I mean by that so there's a new a new pack called turn delay it's going to look very you know uh, exciting um, and for 300 gems here, you will get a hero that is four stars. So this is going to already be better than um, than what you can get right now. So these are some of the examples where for a relatively cheap um, investment, you can actually get something. So I'm going to go ahead and use my 300 gems right now because I think getting one uh, hero of four stars is not a bad deal given them just starting out. Let's see what we get here. Okay. So... Let's see. So given that we just get, you know, we just got a reward for 300 gems from completing Adventure 1, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, so first we get 50,000 gold, which is also useful. A Dark Essence 3, which we don't have, it's going to be useful for uh, leveling up our Dark Cards. And we have a, a Sharheim Taskmaster, and we have a, a Bear the Seeker. So this is a water card that you know, isn't going to be as useful for our green deck, but it is a four star card with a possibility of going up to six stars. So it is something that we could use and it only costs us 300 gems, 300 gems in this case. So take a look at some of the other packs here. Um, the one I was talking about where you can get a guaranteed card at tier two is this. If you click on the question mark, you can always explore and see what you should expect to get and this one will give you a hero three stars and this one will give you a, a hero two star uh, a tier two the challenge with this one is that these cards ha have a different way of leveling the only way to level these cards that come as part of the weekly events you can only level them if you go through the event and collect the uh the catalyst that's required to level them so if you can't participate in guild events these cards are just going to end up being in very low levels so that's that's sort of the drawback there as well so um 
Now, while I show this, I, I still feel that um, it's better for you to think about re preserving your gems as much as possible. Uh, I purchased this, this you know, the first tier just to show it, right? It's up to you, ultimately, how you want to spend it. But I personally rec would recommend saving up for at least a few thousand. At that point, you have more spending power to, to use uh, for any packs that you feel is going to be good for you. And ultimately, it's, it's your choice, but I think that right now, focusing on leveling up and getting more gems is going to be the way to go. At least, don't waste it on the uh, premium hero pack, uh, which is down here. So, the starter pack, I would recommend against that, as well as the premium hero and the premium hero times 11. You see how it costs 5,000 gems? Um, don't spend gems on it. A lot of people, when they first start out, made that mistake. I did. I certainly did. And unfortunately, it's just that the cards that you're going to get will not be as good as what you can get for much cheaper. So something to keep in mind, don't uh, don't waste your gems on these two packs. And if you want to, I would just say uh, wait for something that, that comes along that gives you a good uh, good potential. So that's pretty much the uh, going to be this episode. So uh, next time we come back, I'm going to be at rank 10. I'm going to go over some of the other things that we can do, but uh, just remember, keep going through the, the levels, keep going through uh, the, the main campaign, and then collect the gems, and keep going, and uh, enjoy the game. So, thanks for watching, thanks uh, for, for your time, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.